Welcome to a little video where I want to talk about how to help building believable worlds and using a specific tool called Wired Graph Editor. First of all, a few things ahead, I think personally in the tabletop role-playing game spaces, connections are key and king. How to build connections in your own tabletop role-playing game? Well, everything always relates somehow. Whether you're talking about a, a little meadow with a few trees and a nice scenery or a village tucked away somewhere in a forest or a bustling marketplace in a huge, thriving, vibrant city. Everything that is there has a reason for being there. And it somehow relates to everything around it in some way. It needs to be a good relationship, but it is there. You can, for this, draw from real life. My example would be the name of the city Frankfurt. Why is it called Frankfurt? Well, legend goes, um, I'm not saying this is the truth, but legend goes, this is the place where the Franks under King Karl chose to cross that river. So, the Franks, Frank, Franken, cross there in the foot. Fort being the name for a shallow place in a river where you can cross more or less safely. Why did they do that? Why did they choose this place? These are the questions you need to start asking yourself when you build your own worlds and place characters. Why are they there? Have they always been there? Why have they never left? What keeps them there? Are they lazy? Are they successful? Do they just have everything that they need? If not, why not? If yes, how? Do most people you know or just have everything they want in the place they grew up in it's very rare i would say drawing from real life you can find huge amounts of examples of action and reaction something is done you don't just want to go well this happened and this happened and then this happened and this happened this is this is boring you connect all these actions and reactions with things like goals and ambitions, right? Why did the Franks cross right there? They crossed potentially, and this is where I'm diverting from the official uh, story and creating my own. The, the Franks crossed there to pursue an enemy that fled across the river, setting up on the other side, hoping to catch them unawares, hoping to kill them as they cross the river because the river is said to be too deep to cross. But King Karl, he is an ambitious man and he is not to be easily swayed by such a thing. And in the face of adversity, he finds that one place in the mighty river mine where he can cross with his whole army and then pursue the enemy. But tragedy strikes. As the army crosses the river, the king falls off his horse, dragged down by his rich regalia and his armor he is dragged away despite the shallowness of the water and he drowns. Why? Why did he drown? Was he cursed by an enemy? Did the curse strike right there as his pregnant wife was sitting beyond the other side on the riverbed, waiting in the war camps for her husband to return victoriously, only to be told that the tragic loss of that day was her very man who led them there, who gathered them? There are so many things, and if you add tragedy and adversity to goals and ambitions, they become so much more believable. Think of your own life. How many things have you done? How many choices have you made to overcome adversity or to deal with tragedy? Often the most meaningful and most impactful ones. And this is also helpful in role-playing games. We, we tend to make it very one-dimensional because we believe it's difficult to build these sort of ideas and then keep them in our heads because our lives are very, very complex and so are all the lives of everyone around us. They're equally complex. And that is a little bit daunting, I think, but it needn't be. We want to generate depth. We want to do it quickly. We want to do it easily. We want it to be adaptable because, well, stories sometimes change or new players enter a established picture and change things up it should be for both the players and the dms because a player going through a world making new connections getting to know new places and people 
might want to keep track themselves and it might, due to the complexity that we can easily achieve here, become slightly overwhelming if there's no easy way to do that. Often, of course, everyone takes notes and things, but you might lose some nuances, honestly, if you just have a list of things that you then have to go through every time. How do you even relate to one thing and another? And it also really helps to never forget a connection because once you have created something meaningful, obviously the really meaningful ones, and I can't tell you which those are going to be because that's different from player to player, from dungeon master to dungeon master, whatever your table latches onto, you want those connections to stay. Obviously the really important ones are going to stay. You're not going to forget the young dragon that swooped down at the, in the nick of time to devour the enemy that you just so barely managed to fight off but you were already on the losing side so now you revere that dragon because he helped you right so this is a thing that might happen illustrating all those connections especially if you're building a framework for your players to exist in say a city or a village or anything else a dungeon even it really helps to visualize all that because you can make it really complex really quickly and it's super easy. We're going to do this right now. So for this, uh, we're switching out of this presentation and we go over to Editor. It's free. Link is in the description. Download it, install it, run it. It's not going to look exactly like this on your first run, though. The reason for this is because I did a few settings and I will walk th through some of these real quick. Go to File up here. Go to Preferences and select the following things on background go to the color thing and just type in hashtag three 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 if you like white then just leave it it's fine uh you can drag and drop these windows here wherever you want i've set it up to work a little bit better with my workflows that i'm used to we're gonna start right in you can just quick, you can you can drag and drop these and it's going to show you where you, can, where you can dock these. Now, I like in the palette to use the flowchart elements because these are really simple and I don't need anything much fancy. We're here for other things. Building a relationship or a place should be quick and easy, as I said. So I'm going to do this off the top of my hat. I haven't prepared this. We're just going to build it real quick. Say we have the person who called the party to the town. His name is Leslie Turnspike. And we have to click this and make it a little bit larger. You can go to the sides here and drag it out. Um, this is where the background color becomes a little bit problematic because you can't quite see the exact handles of these elements here. They're kind of vanishing. But if you hover on the side, the mouse will change accordingly. Now, we have Leslie Turnspike. Why did he call the party? What does he need adventurers for? Well, let's say he has, or had rather, a daughter. We're going to copy this, just select it, CTRL-C, CTRL-V. For me, if I import it, uh, it immediately goes to editing this label. You can simply press F2 on your keyboard to get the same effect. This will be Amelie turn spike, not turn pike, turn spike. All right, so let's build a connection here. So this is his daughter. We're gonna just drag and drop this over here. And your arrow is gonna look different from mine. I suggest you do it similarly to me. It's gonna be black. so might have a bit of a difficulty to see it. All I did was left click here, hold down the mouse key, drag this arrow and then release it on there. You can have as many as you want, but that's how easy it is to build this connection. If you left click in between here, you build basically a little path. We're going to show you why this isn't needed in a moment. Um, but first, let's get this fixed here. What you want to do, this is going to be black for you per default. Go select it, click on line color and select some gray, for example, like I did or any color you like. And also on the label down here, select white for the label color. Once you have done that, also if you want the rounded edges here, roll down a little bit and go for smooth bends and make a check mark there. Once you've done that, you can then go over here and look for current elements. Then you right click this 
and say use as default. So whatever design you just set, every time you pull a new one, this is going to be it. We're going to have multiple, but we want a solid, easy default design. Now I want to label this connection here. I select it, I press F2, and you're going to see here a really little red box blinking, and we're just going to type in, and we'll do it like this, daughter, father, and to have arrows on both ends, I'm just going to click here in source arrow, select the same type as the target arrow. So now these are related as daughter, father. Now there's more to this relationship. She is gone. So he is searching for. I try to keep these simple not too complex. And I like to give them different colors as well. Not the text, but the arrows. And I have kind of come down to uh, intentional things, say searching for, looking into, spying on, something that's a little bit more passive, trying to influence things that are more attempting, things that are in progress that haven't really happened yet, or aren't a direct negative or positive. I, I, I like to use pink, because why not? So Leslie Turnspike is searching for Amelie Turnspike. So already, this is a very simple, bog-standard RPG setup. So let's go a little bit deeper. What is Leslie Turnspike's job in the village he lives in? Let's say he's a smith. And recently, I'm going to copy this again, paste it. There has been a new smith in town. His name is Juan... Hard belly. Ah, he's a dwarf. So he gets the big smith. Because <laughs> he's a he's a dwarf, and dwarven are good. So they have a bit of a rivalry going on, right? Because now he's in, encroaching on his territory. Again, we're gonna give both arrows because they don't like each other very much. And click this. And we say rivals. And this is a clearly negative. Uh, situation. So we're going to give this a red. So now we have this. And because they are rivals, he, Leslie Turnspike, suspects Juan Hardbelly of adopting, abducting his daughter. So just going to throw another relationship there. We don't see that all that well, so I'm going to press CTRL Z or something like that. You can also go back and forth in your actions here. And we're just going to build it like this, so I have an easier time dealing with that arrow. And I'm going to press F2 again to set the label. You can also, in general, up here, click in there, type it in. Fine. does exactly the same thing. So I'm going to say suspects of abducting daughter. Now, this is a suspicion. So for this, again, we're going to use the pink. It's not directly red. It's not an attack or anything. But he's a specter. It's, it's a passive-ish action. Now, I said, you don't need to worry about setting all these up. This program, and I think this is one of my favorite features about it, has this little button up here. One-click layout, it's called. So it won't do much here, but follow with me. If you click this, move everything around a little bit to make it more easily observable. So we have this, this little setup here. He's searching for his daughter, who is lost. We could also go in here and say, lost. You know, she, she's gone right now. Well, I need to press enter, not escape. Lost, enter, there we go. And there's this new smith in town. And he is suspecting her, uh, him because they had a rivalry ever since he arrived. Uh, he has been talking shit about his work. Leslie isn't taking too kindly to that because he's having some success. Because quite honestly, Leslie has been getting older. So his work has deteriorated a little bit. As a matter of fact, Juan Hardbelly didn't abduct her. It wasn't him. So let's introduce antagonist. We are going to go with all the tropes today. We are not going to go with a person in this moment. We are going to create a faction or a group rather. For this, I just like to use a box standard box here. And we are going to call this uh, Kobold mercenaries or maybe we give them a name they are the 
thin tooth ravages and they are mercenaries kobolds and we make this a little bit bigger so we can read that box now these are mercenaries so ne they're not necessarily antagonistic but they might be for this reason i like to give them more of an orangey box so we have some color selections here and we go from light to a little bit darker now this doesn't read all too well you can also go ahead and set the text color to white and then in the font style set it to bold so ah uh, it's still a bit a bit difficult to read because the bright orange there is a little bit too bright so we're gonna go with darker on both and now we have this it's all too light i'm just gonna go with this here okay this looks better they were the ones taking her they abducted her and we'll make this red because that's a very mean thing to do Ooh, that was the wrong color I'm gonna make this red. Red. There we go. They abducted her. But why? Why did they abduct her? Well, Leslie Turnspike, having the quality of his work go down, he actually inadvertently, at least in the opinion of let's get someone new here. Stella Freeman. No, free woman? No. Freehold. Let's call her Stella Freehold. And she is a merchant. Now, Stella Freehold had, in the past, bought new horseshoes from Leslie Turnspike. But these were bad quality. Really bad quality. So deteriorating business relationship they have this here and it's a little bit both ways because she refuses to pay and he refuses to acknowledge that he did anything wrong so they have this deteriorating business relationship yeah we could add another label so we have two for this, and we go bad horseshoes denies doing it, denies payment. Of course, this new label doesn't have our nice settings there, so we'll have to go ahead and get this white real quick. There we go. And she, in retaliation, in a moment of grief, over lost revenue, yes, that's what capitalists do, went ahead and told these guys, ordered abduction of Amelie Transpike. This is a command action for which I like to use blue or teal or something like it. Now, suddenly, we have a very easy story going. It's have this sorted a little bit better. So let's go over it again. Leslie Turnspike is a smith. He has been in his village for a long time. Suddenly, a new smith turns up, Juan Hardbelly, and they become rivals because he takes his business. He hasn't been doing all that well. He suspects him to further ruin him of abducting his daughter. He's searching for her. They're related. And in reality, it was this scorned customer well before maybe maybe they had been friends even that ordered the abduction of little amelie from these mercenaries to yeah that's a good question what exactly does she want to achieve with it out of a moment of grief how do we get a moment of grief in here so let's say stella freehold had a son martin freehold and he was her heir. Was, I say, because the bad horseshoes that Leslie Turnspike had sold her were, in her mind, the cause 
for his tragic death when he fell off a horse because that horse had bad horseshoes. So we go son, mother. This is their main relationship and it goes in both directions. She is grieving for him because he's dead. We can also go ahead and add that. He is dead. You could also even add little icons, I think. I'm not entirely sure if you can use emoticons. Let's find this out real quick. If you press on Windows 10 anyway, Windows 11 maybe too, press the Windows key and the dot key, you get a selection. And we're going to look if we can find a cross maybe. Yes, there are crosses. And we're going to see. Yeah, we can even put icons in here. So he's dead. He's diseased. So she... Grieves for her son. And this is, well, I like to use green for positive relationships, but this is, is a emotional relationship. Let's use orange. This is, this is very emotional here. And now she wants to avenge her son's death. Or not avenge so much, but revenge for son's death and this we make red again because this is a negative thing it's an attack now it's still a little bit muddled again let's click our little magic button and there we go the players as they come to interact with these people they might first meet leslie turnspike because he's the one who called for aid he, he's the one needing help so they talk to him and he tells them his suspicion about juan hardbelly who, once they talk, will find out that he took his business from Stella Freehold. So we add a new connection here real quick. Took business from Leslie. So this now is a positive relationship because they, they have, you know, business dealings. Let's quickly... So I have this. Now, obviously, every time you click this, it's going to be aligned a little bit differently. So don't rely on where things are. Rely on your knowledge of what's going on here. We already we have a really nicely complex little system going on here. And I like to explain things this way, uh, where I tell you what happens and why. So they talk to Huan. Huan tells them, I have nothing to do with that. But... He might be cagey. He might be cagey about that he took the business from Leslie. And maybe he even feels a little bit responsible for it. Agatha Christie, I think it was, said, everyone always has something to hide. If you if you treat your characters always like that, every mystery is going to be even more mysterious. So he might not divulge immediately that he took that business away from Leslie. He, he might not even know that the only reason he got the business is that tragedy. He just arrived. He doesn't know about um, about Martin Freehold, maybe. He only knows that Stella Freehold used to be a customer of Leslie Turnspike. And he, going door to door, basically talked to everyone who would hear him and went ahead. And yeah, I'm taking your business. But he feels like, well, there might be something bad about it. He doesn't know. He might not immediately tell. You might find out somewhere else that this happened. And now, suddenly, you have a new option. And then, interrogating her, you might find out they have her. And then you can go fight them, and so on and so forth. Now, another thing I want to show you, and that's the last thing I really want to show you here, is grouping. Let's say we have the party introduced here. So we have Uladan, the bear, who's our druid. And we have a small party. It's just two players. Rexala. Half. Heart. And she is a. Barbarian. There we go. So, so these two. These are our group. Let's style them a little bit differently. Because they of course are players. I like to use greenish stuff. For players. Hasn't anything to do with their class. It's just how I like it. Again, because it's the hard to read. The contrast isn't great here. It's okay, but it's not great. Uh, I tend to go for white on colored backgrounds and make them bold. 
Now, obviously, to spare me some work, I'm just going to copy that name out of here. That might not have worked. Oh, it actually worked. Very good. So we have that. Now, these are our party. Obviously, our party might have their very own reasons to be here. So you might create individual collection connections to everyone there. Like, let's say, um, Rexala Harford being a dwarf, she she likes Huan Hardbelly. You know, say, just likes. And it's a green thing. She likes him. So she's she's maybe not inclined to believe he wasn't. Bullet on the bear, he's he's suspicious. You know, suspicious. He feels like there's something he, he, they're not being told by this man. So he gets this, he's suspicious. Now, let's get the party. And you select multiple by clicking one, then holding down the shift key, and then clicking another. I think CTRL doesn't work, so it's the shift key here. Right click and simply say grouping and say group or CTRL alt G. Now the group sets up party. This is our party. And we can again style this however we want. I like to take away uh, the background here, which is the fill color. I like to go no color there. Now we don't see it anymore. So we give it a green outline like this. We make that outline a little bit thicker so we can see it easier. And we make the header also green. And we make the label just as we did before, white and bold. So this is our party. And now we can connect the party itself to Leslie Turnspike. Agreed to help because they did that. And now the party is also searching for her. Searching for. Again, this is pink. And this is green because they're helping. Your colors might be different. Now we click this again. Everything swooshes about a little bit. And now we have this wonderful overview. I know it looks complex. It looks like, oh, there's a lot going on. But if you focus on the things themselves, there, there's even a, a nice little thing called the neighborhood. If you click a single thing here, I have it to auto hide so it goes away. But if you click a single thing, you see the direct connections to the thing that you have selected. Sadly, you can't change the background color here. So using my white black on the main view uh, means you can't <laughs> read the labels here. But you might find a better setup than I have. I don't use the neighborhood all that much because honestly, after you've done this and after you've built a large tree, it's so fun to just zoom around in here. Just scroll in, hold on right mouse button and just look at what you've done. This is so fun. Honestly, to me, it's really fun. I hope it's fun to you as well and you're going to enjoy this. And it's easy. Every time you come to a new idea, every time you want to introduce a new group, a new person, a new party, anything, just throw them in here. We could even go ahead and go and say uh, Leslie Turnspike and Amelie Turnspike. We group them as well and we call them the Turnspike family. There we go. Again, real quick, we're going to remove the background on the box. I don't like it. We're going to make the outline something visible. We're going to use yellow. We're going to use thicker borders. We're going to change the label background to something orangey. And then we go ahead and take Stella Freehold and Martin Freehold and group them as well. So these are the Freehold family. Uh, we just repeat what we've done before. No fill. The line color is also something that we can see. Maybe this turquoise here. Well, very light blue anyway. Then the background for the label is also going to be this very light blue. We click this again. And this even helps further organize everything, keep it a little bit uh, more in shape. You don't have to do that, but it might just help you keep everything more visible. You can even close these elements if, if it's not important in that very moment uh, to help reduce the clutter that's going on here. And it's just, honestly, it's it's a fantastic tool. 
and I strongly, strongly recommend you setting it up, getting it going for yourself, uh, because you saw how easily we could build something that has a certain type of depth. The more elements you add, because obviously this village doesn't have just a smith. There's going to be a baker, there's going to be a tavern keep, there's going to be, I don't know, a, a rowdy gang of teenagers, something like that. And they might have entirely different things. Let's say our Huan Hardbelly, you know, let's throw something in there. Let's say Hagar the Mighty exists. And he is a red dragon, yeah? So let's say this is a thing. And he, dragons are bad boys. They, they, they are fairly antagonistic, so we make him all red. And we make him... Ah, we could have even this if, if you liked it. I made this by mistake. I wanted to get this. Plain bolt. There we go. And the reason Huan Hardbelly stuff is so much better than everyone else's is because they have a deal. Forge fire for, well, payment. It's a dragon. He might be greedy. Yeah, let's say payment. Now, Huan, with the forge fire from the dragon, managed to create absolutely fantastic tools and things but he can't keep up. and we're gonna make this red because he's expects large payment soon there and he can't pay so this is a red thing So now we have given new motivations to people. There, there's new things going on. No one might even know about Hagar the Mighty. It mightn't even be around, but it is there. And you can really quickly build this out. And if you sit down, we have been at this for half an hour now. And really quickly, we built this. And you don't have to remember any of it. But you can quickly revisit all of it the second you want to and need to. And generally, your party is not going to be involved with everyone and everything. And the more you build, the less likely it is that you have to have everything for every session. Now, the last thing we're going to look at is if you if you export it, because that's lovely, you can just go and export and it'll give you some options. You can do a PNG and everything else. So you can have this, you can put it in your... OneNote or wherever you keep all your information ready. You don't have to have wide it or open. You can just pull it out as an image. You can print it out, whatever helps you. But this is, to me, just for the magic one-click layout button here and the ease of use and everything, this was a game changer for me to help really dig down, really get some stories going, add some tragedy, add some twists that don't feel contrived but something that is just how it is. It happened. It, it had always been there, maybe. It happened recently. I hope this helped you in some way. If so, please leave a like. If you've got any sort of question here, leave it down in the comments. I'm not super proficient at using this tool. I bet it can do way, way more than what I showed you. But this, what I showed you today, this is all you need to really help build that depth, build a believable world. It's, of course, not everything you need for it. But it's one of the major tools that I found that helped me quite a lot. So go and build. Let me know what you build, maybe. I would be really interested in that. Yeah, I hope to see you around again. See you next time. Until then, bye-bye.